Good morning, folks. Let's start in Europe. Videos of rough sea conditions are streaming in from Spain to the UK. We indeed keep having reason to revisit the topic of power lows in Europe causing stronger wind than normal and way higher storm surges. Some of the water elevations that have happened there would put Florida one-fourth underwater. The low responsible for this one is quite strong, one of the best in the northern hemisphere at the moment. It is creating that south extending convergence tail that will continue the nasty situation today. Tropical development, taking a break here, we still have some rain in northern Australia and the convergence between there and New Zealand is gaining precipitable water quickly, shifting east towards the South Island. Still got a low system out in the Pacific, she may never leave. As for the US today, we're kind of all over the place, check your local conditions and forecasts. Well folks, this is why it helps to notice and differentiate aftershocks and foreshock activity. Indeed, the second six-pointer to hit the area of Greece in a week, and we'll watch the following rumbles today. Also hit 4.0 in the Caribbean, which is where I start paying attention there. West Pacific due to shake as well. Top story, the only story today. Scientists from NASA, Johns Hopkins, and the Hebrew University in Jerusalem are stating that the human climate forecasting is flawed. Forget everything else we've shown here. If this channel and other climate truth proponents weren't around, now we'd still be left with the science of global warming not matching the observational data. In fact, it can stimulate and exacerbate cooling. Ha! That's no sunspot. That's a kaiju. Let's start up north first. We do have Delta. The system looks great, but it's really put in place by the best sunspot I've ever seen. Best bipolar umbra I've ever seen. Huge delta zone, yet unable to express herself into X-flare range yet. Even if she does, she's competing with the stellar magnetic shutdown. Solar wind is showing why NASA and NOAA are baffled about the incoming CME. I believe their current thinking is even worse than their first. These glancing blows don't always have homogeneous impact signatures. It appears likely that some of the first bits of ejecta arrived just before February 2nd, and the rest is arriving now. By tomorrow, when those experts expect impact, could be waning already. The big earth-facing sunspots are beneath the orange umbral fields. Those are in the lowest level of the coronal fields in blue, arching far longer and larger across the sun. Where those coronal fields open, we get coronal holes. The one coming in now is a returning opening that failed to produce strong seismicity last time, so the buildup is there. Add to the coronal hole the geocentric opposition of Venus and Jupiter in long-range lineup not breaking for a few days yet. The energy levels are solid, and we have the potential for more, especially as the big spots get to the departing limb. Earthquake condition index is very high and continues into the week. Officially a watch both under our feet and on our star. Could see more flaring soon. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.